most of what you would like to say today. And, uh, and we'll, we'll bring in Steve to, to ask you your opinion of the uh, settlement. Okay, is that okay? I have opinions, yes. yes. <laughs> and could you introduce yourself as sure. a, a litigant, right? Appellant. Or, or, we are appellants. Yes. We're not yes. really litigants, we're yes. appellants. Yeah. And plaintiffs. Church Street with the uh, members of the Coalition for Liberal City, right in front of the Burlington Town Mall, Town Center, and the Burlington Town Center settlement was reached. So, Michael, what do you think of that? The settlement is, um, I guess it's a step uh, forward. Uh, it's disappointing in some ways and helpful in others. The big disappointment in the settlement, I think for me personally and for many members of the CLC, is that the overblown 14-story mall will still be an overblown 14-story mall. But there are positive developments that have come out of the settlement uh, as well. One of them is that 200 parking spaces will be underground, which is where we believe all of them should have been to begin with, uh, but the developer insisted that that was unfeasible, so there will be two under underground spaces. Uh, a portion of the overlay district uh, in which 14-story buildings, additional 14-story buildings uh, might have been built. Uh, it's been agreed that uh, no buildings in that portion of the district will exceed uh, 10 stories. Uh, there are other uh, provisions, there's a uh, half a million dollar fund which will uh, provide for community-based downtown initiatives instead of uh, investor-based downtown initiatives such as the mall redevelopment as originally proposed. Uh, and uh, there are some other provisions too which I'm not thinking of just now, sorry about that. Charles, what is your take on it? What do, you, what do you, what does this mean? Well, yeah, in my sense, I mean, what's, what's Coalition for Livable City has done, and I want to make it clear I'm speaking as an individual, although I've been very active in the CLC. But what they've done is provide the, the important and missing critical voice on development downtown. So, for example, the original proposal was to totally demolish the uh, Cherry Street parking garage and not to provide any additional parking for people coming into the small businesses, to the restaurants on Church Street. And they would have suffered enormously had the original Synex proposal gone through because all of the parking that he would build would be earmarked for the tenants, the commercial and the retail tenants in his building. So this would have taken off the, off the table uh, opportunities for tourists to come, for uh, people from the, uh, from the wider area to come to drive in and, and to frequent the, the stores. So we saved him that. I think we also saved Synex, a terrible mistake, in his own design where he had had uh, 40 uh, uh, units of his, of his apartments for students who would essentially be a downtown extension of the uh, campus housing for for uh, Champlain uh, College and this would not have helped him to rent on a, on a commercial basis the rest of his units to be living next to a dormitory would have been I think a disaster and he did not understand that and CLC made it clear nor, nor in fact did the, did the uh, city council or the mayor understand the drawbacks in this system one thing after another. So I think the settlement did address that. There will be no student housing downtown. There'll be much more parking. Uh, and so I think we won a, a small victory. But I, what I'd, I would like to just say very quickly is that the, uh, the Marketplace District and the Marketplace Commission under the leadership of Ron Redmond really owes CLC an enormous vote of thanks. They haven't done so. Instead, they have taken the, uh, the alternative position, which is to uncritically endorse the Synex proposal. We made it much more responsible, and I think the Marketplace Commission, I think the mayor, and I think the city council owe CLC an enormous vote of thanks. 
And is the fight over? Uh, is the fight over now with the settlement? Well, I think that what we're continuing to do is to criticize uh, sort of a, uh, a carte blanche for development. So, for example, Macy's is probably going to go under. Um, its owner, which is uh, uh, another large corporation, Hudson's Bay Company, is, is losing value in its stock. Uh, it's very likely that they're already closing stores. So I could see Macy's going under. The city council included that in the 14-story in the uh, overlay district that they developed. And another buyer to that property will likely demolish it and put in 14 stories. So we're beginning this process of incremental uh, expansion of the downtown, which is going to lead to just one very tall building after another. And I think that CLC has got to continue to make the case that this is not consistent with a livable city. Could you talk a little bit about the tax um, incentives that this mall is getting from the, the taxpayers in Burlington. Okay, so uh, part of uh, this mall proposal involved a tax increment financing, which is essentially a subsidy for developers. Developers are very uh, excited about tax increment financing because it, it takes public funds and uses them to support private development, uh, if not directly, at least at least indirectly. So in this case, uh, around $22 million was, uh, was approved by the, by the taxpayers to be borrowed uh, by the public uh, to support this development. And much of that was to, well, part of it was to pay for the streets. In other words, the real estate that the mall currently covers that will be come uh, the extension of Pine Street and Saint, the reconnection of Pine Street and, and, and Saint, Saint Paul Street. Initially, uh, this TIF money was going to be used in part to pay the developer for the real estate that would make up those those new uh, portions of those of those streets, and the additional millions would be to actually build the streets, pave them, engineer them, put in the sidewalks and the other amenities that are part of a pleasant. Uh, Pleasant downtown street. So the CLC and and other people uh, oppose that concept of public money subsidizing private development and brought a suit against that uh, as part of the settlement agreement that was reached. Uh, the developer has agreed to give back that real estate to the community, so the community won't, won't have to pay for it, but TIF money will still be expended to develop uh, those streets when we feel that that is really the responsibility of the developer. What Michael was saying is that the uh, uh, Don Sinex and, and the Burlington Town Center group has agreed to give back the, the street beds to the public at no cost. And my point was that uh, these street beds were originally given to the developers of the mall, apparently at no cost. The city has apparently not been interested in doing the research to find out if any money was paid. But it would appear from the settlement that Don Sinex has accepted the fact that the uh, project which he purchased pretty inexpensively, in fact, was a beneficiary of this free public land. And now he's returned that to the city, which is, I think, a good thing, although we will be paying quite a bit of money for the development of the streets and the street frontage, which is benefiting his project specifically. So I don't think the, the, the TIF process is itself beyond criticism. Where do we go from here? Where does coalition go? In what direction? I, th I think as Charles uh, suggested, the, 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 the goal is yeah, to have development proceed uh, responsibly and with the public interest in mind rather than primarily focusing on the interests of, uh, of, of developers and investors. And that's the real objection here. To go back to the very beginning, uh, the deal breaker as far as I'm concerned was when the city and the city council agreed to change the zoning law at the behest of the developer. The whole purpose of zoning laws is to protect the public interest and have the city develop in a way that serves the 
the, the general population, the, uh, the residents of the city and the residents of, of the area. If a developer can come into town and say, oh, uh, those, those zoning laws you have, they, they, don't, they don't work for me. I need some different zoning laws. And if then the city jumps uh, and, uh, and, 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 and goes out of their way to uh, make these changes, then there's really no point in having zoning laws. There's really no, uh, that promise which the zoning law represents is is, is, is broken. You know, if as a resident you can look at the laws and you can kind of see, well, uh, our downtown is going to be this high or our neighborhoods are going to be this dense, and you can, you can kind of count on that. Not that it's never going to ever change, but that certain things are pretty solid and you can expect them to remain that way. Uh, that's not the case anymore because this uh, developer because I think of the, the, the number of dollars that he promised to invest in the, in the, in the community, that kind of dazzled uh, many, many people uh, and, and, and made them perhaps see less clearly than they might have otherwise. And they were then willing to just change the laws uh, to suit the developer instead of requiring the developer to observe and respect the laws. And those laws are really laws that grew out of the community and uh, they reflected the vision that the community has for their city. I believe that that vision should have been respected by our city officials and the developer coming in as well. And how does it stand now with the zoning laws? Can another developer come along and, uh, and have his way? Uh, that is a, it's an open question, really. I mean, certainly the CLC and others who have resisted this development have shown that it might not be altogether easy, that you can't just do that without uh, some kind of uh, turmoil or, 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 or pushback. So I think that's helpful. The, the, the environment, the fact that people are actively engaged in their community is, uh, is, is, is a known factor now. I don't think that was expected in this case, but it still is an open question. They were able to change the law because they had the support of the mayor and the council and perhaps that could happen again that's the that's the danger that's where the kind of the solid reassurance that good zoning laws provide for the community that has been eroded by uh, by the way these laws were changed uh, helter skelter to serve uh, Don Sinex. Hi. Double your uh, it's that wasn't for me I, I'll tell the story later but it's just occurring. Steve, Steve. You'll never be able to hear me over the Loomis truck, though, I yeah, don't yeah, think. Yeah, so, yeah, we can wait a minute. He's going to move in a second. He's just yeah. going through. I was the designated representative for the appellants who were appealing the permits that the mall had gotten from the city. Myself, Barbara McGrew and John Franco negotiated with the developer to try and see if we could reach a mediated agreement. The thing you got to know about mediation is if we could agree on something, it's probably not going to be something we really wanted or that they really wanted, but it's what we could think we could live with. And that's basically what it came down to. But we looked at all the circumstances, we looked at what all our options were, and one option would have been to continue to fight this as long as it went. I unfortunately don't think it was going to go as long as we hoped. But I think we decided we could get something now that we wouldn't get later. And it was probably the, the best we were going to end up with. The system is heavily say, slanted in favor of this development, the way the whole thing was set up and the way the courts were ruling. There were some rulings in our favor, but a lot of them were not. And you could see how they were trying to make it more difficult for us to proceed as this thing went along. So I think we reached a settlement on some important issues, though, and these guys have probably gone through some of it. One is at least in future developments on this site, there's a phase two possible. There won't be 14 story buildings on that. They've also agreed to not sell the land for Pine Street and St. Paul Street, which are gonna to return to the city. They're not gonna sell that. They're gonna give that to the city now. Now they still wanna charge for the improvements to it, but at least they're gonna give that back. Um, there'll be no students, no student well, there could be students. A student could rent a unit in this building, but none of this where 
a college is going to rent a whole floor or rent 100 units and rent them out to students. It's not going to become any kind of a downtown student living facility. And then, I'm probably forgetting one item, but the thing that I thought was the biggest thing for us, because it's the future, and I think it's some of the things that probably Charles and Michael have talked about, this isn't the end of this struggle. This guy builds one thing, it could be a domino effect to build much more. We got them to agree that we're, we, not them, we will establish a nonprofit fund, probably through the Vermont Community Fund, which will be our umbrella organization. But it'll be a fund that we manage, not them, not the developer, we will manage it. And that fund will be for the purpose of protecting and promoting the character of Burlington. And it'll start with some money from the developer. I'm hoping we're going to grow it and it's going to be bigger than what he's putting in. And that will be what I would call a counterweight to the notion of just keep building, change the ordinance, build bigger, build bigger. We want to do things that will preserve the character. And neighborhoods and people and organizations that want to do that, we may be able to provide some funding to do that. Because up till now, the side that we're on has been really under, let's say underfunded. We don't have the weapons that they have. They've got all the money and all the resources. This will be our counterweight to see that we want growth of a certain type, but we don't want to see everything just get pushed aside, the moneyed interests get whatever they want and sort of force the issue. I think there's a lot of common ground on good development in the city and we're going to help to be part of that. So that's, uh, that's the future of this. It doesn't end now. That, there's a lot of future to come. Let me start by saying that, uh, as Steve says, money is a big factor here. The way this turned out has a lot to do with who has more money and who has less money. It's really not a level playing field for citizens trying to shape their community because as in the struggle we saw that we were outspent six to one uh, when it came to uh, advocating for or against ballot items that allowed this project to, to go forward. So the CLC, the Coalition for a Livable City, the name really tells a lot. It's a coalition. It came together as a, a, a number of different community organizations that have been advocating for things, specific uh, issues in their areas, such as in the, in the Arts District or City Hall Park or advocating for, uh, for a walkable and bikeable Southern Connector, etc. People involved in those various issues came together in a sort of a laser focus around this mall project because it was so big and, and so central. And the concern is to then work together at a gr grassroots level, uh, kind of real democracy, real people, not, uh, not investors and money calling all of the all the shots and make this community livable for the people who live here and the people who visit here and not focus instead on the interests of investors who are looking for returns, focus instead on the interests of people who love this community and want to shape it and live in it and enjoy it and not, not take a, kind of a back seat to uh, moneyed interests. Well, I would just say that uh, I would welcome uh, the uh, market uh, marketplace commission, Ron Redmond, and the city council, and certainly the mayor, to continue to meet with CLC on these variety of somewhat contentious development issues, because CLC is not going anywhere. Uh, we have, uh, I think, uh, quite a uh, collection of uh, experts and people with a lot of experience in urban development and we are conscientious and we are thoughtful and we are keep, try to keep in mind the greater interests of the residents of Burlington and we need to have government open to our input as it should be open to the input of every citizen and that's got to mean something more than two minutes of, of public comment period at City Council.